Hey guys, this is Mike at Craft Beer Storm on this Friday. And that means today we have Craft Brew News uh, going over the news of the past week. Uh, oh, I'm also a founder brewer at Barra Brewing Company in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. We got St. Patty's Day coming up next weekend. I'm hoping that you can uh, come in. We have festivities. We're trying to line up some music. Uh, that'll be the 15th, 16th, and 17th. If you're in the area, please come in. Got some good stout survivor. We got some good stuff going on. Uh, and also this Monday on March 11th, we're hosting um, Hops for Hope, which is uh, for the Alzheimer's Association. Uh, they have a ride to end Alzheimer's and a team end ALZ. This is like a runs and triathlons they do. So you can come in and you uh, can uh, learn more about that. Uh, it's in our tap room, 2800 Lafayette Road in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. On Monday at 7 p.m., 7 to 9 p.m. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's a great, great organization. Um, I'm also running the uh, Mar- New York City Marathon for the American Cancer Society. I got to put that page together, but I'm trying to uh, raise some money for them as well. Uh, so, yeah, crap brew news. Here we go. First story, Massachusetts High Court rules against... Craft Beer Guild Appeal. Craft Beer Guild got in trouble a couple of years ago. Um, uh, the alleged uh, pay-to-play activities. So, Supreme Judicial Court of Massachusetts has denied the Sheehan Family Company's subsidiary Craft Beer Guild's attempt to appeal a ruling that had violated laws prohibiting unfair trade practices and illegal pay-to-play activities, uh, according to the Boston Globe. By the way, all these... Uh, uh, Articles come uh, courtesy of Brewbound.com. The state high court agreed with the Massachusetts Alcoholic Beverages Control Commission, the ABCC, which found that uh, the beer wholesaler had violated state law against price discrimination, a practice in which retailers sell the same quantity of product at different prices to different retailers. Uh, By offering rebates to some retailers and not others, uh, in a statement to the press, uh, the ABCC said it remains committed to ensuring an equal playing field in the alcoholic beverages industry in Massachusetts. Well, you know, good for the ABCC. It's good stuff. Uh, they said, we are pleased with today's decision of the Supreme Judicial Court upholding the regulation that prohibits manufacturers and wholesalers from bribing retailers. Ooh, bribing. As Brubound, no, that doesn't exist, does it? Nah. As Brubound previously reported, the ABCC found that the Craft Beer Guild, which distributes more than uh, 200 craft brands uh, throughout Massachusetts, had paid bars about $120,000 from tap handle placements. Wow, what a shocker. In 2017 ruling upheld this week uh, by the Supreme uh, Judicial Court, Suffolk's uh, Superior Court judge ruled that ABCC which slapped the Craft Beer Guild, which also operates as Craft Brewers Guild, with a 90-day license suspension in 2016 after an investigation revealed the company had engaged in a pervasive illegal enterprise involving numerous retailers and corporations that spanned at least five years. So in lieu of the suspension, Craft Beer Guild agreed to pay a $2.6 million fine. I remember when all this stuff came out, you know, they accused them um, of all this pay-to-play stuff. And 90-day suspension would have probably destroyed the company, so they agreed to just shell out $2.6 million, which is a lot of cash. Um, but I haven't heard of anything else since. I don't know, you know, uh, and I can't say that this has happened. I can't, you know, accuse people of this happening. I know I go into uh, bars and restaurants sometimes, and they say, oh, we don't deal with self-distribution, which is BS. Um, that just hurts the smaller brewer. If I if I make a quantity of beer, I want to get some of it out there, and also it's great marketing for me. Local local bars as well. Hey, Portsmouth, if you have a local restaurant bar, get in touch with me, Michael at uh, BearIrishBrew.com. We're trying to get out there. Um, <clears throat> again, we have a, a, we have, we're in bars and restaurants out there, I'm sure, but... Try to get more local here. Okay, Portsmouth, you hear me? All right. Anyway, Drizzly files lawsuit against co-founder in an eyes cannabis delivery. Uh, a lawsuit filed le- this week by Boston-based uh, on-demand alcohol delivery company Drizzly 
against Nick Rellis, its former co-founder and CEO, reveal the e-commerce company's plans to expand into medical and recreational cannabis delivery later this year, according to uh, Law 360. So Drizzly, which is uh, you know setting up a nice delivery service for alcohol, they're wanting to get into delivering cannabis too. Hey, it's it's illegal in Massachusetts, so why not? Lawsuit alleges Rellis, uh, who exited Drizzly in August, violated a one-year non-compete and non-disclosure agreement by attempting to start his own e-commerce cannabis delivery business, the outlet the outlet reported. Well, if you sign a non-compete, you know, you can't really do anything for a year. Uh, and I guess, I don't know. We'll, we'll see what happens. So beginning in late 2017 and continuing through his tenure as CEO, Drizzly decided to enter an adjacent market for another highly controlled product, legalized medical and recreational cannabis, the lawsuit said. Uh, Drizzly has approached potential commercial retail partners, explored the best path to market, consulted with state regulatory officials, and crafted a market entry plan. So apparently he started the ball rolling with Drizzly, and then he left, and he said, hey, I can do this on my own. So he just, you know, kind of, created his own business uh, to do the same thing. So, you know, it, it depends on what you sign and how valid that agreement is. And I guess now it's up to uh, lawyers and courts to decide, you know, what he did, uh, you know, if he, if he violated that agreement. So uh, we will see with that as well. The U.S. Supreme uh, won't hear uh, Consumers Mega Brew Challenge. So the U.S. Supreme Court has passed on hearing beer consumers bid to block Anheuser-Busch in Bev's $107 billion with a B acquisition of rival SAB Miller, according to Law 360. So this is going on. I guess people are still trying to block it, even though it's happened. Um, interesting. A group of consumers had filed a lawsuit arguing that allowing the mega brew merger to proceed would have constricted the beer market, the outlet reported. In October, the merger cleared its final hurdle to approval as a federal judge signed a modified final judgment. More than two years after the Department of Justice uh, initially greenlit the acquisition. Um, well, the Department of Justice does it, you know, and I don't know what else you can do, you know, except go to the Supreme Court, and then they're like, we're not even going to hear it. So it's done. I guess we have to accept it. Um, there are a lot of forces out there, um, and, and a, a mega merger like this is, I don't think it's good for anybody. Um, just, it just puts a lot of power in, in, in few hands. Uh, it's kind of an oligarchy that we have now, right? You have InBev, AB, Mil- Molson Coors, and, uh, you know, other brands, uh, which influence the market, uh, tremendously and influence, uh, stores and bars and restaurants and, you know, I guess we have to live with it and, and try to figure ways uh, around it and, uh, you know, try to work work with these guys too, you know. I mean, they're they're promoting beer, which is good. Um, we just have to f- figure out uh, how the smaller guy can uh, benefit out of it as well. Last story, New Holland receives approval for Paps branded whiskey. So New Holland Brewing Company recently received federal label approval for Paps Brewing Company branded whiskey. Uh, signaling a contract distilling arrangement between the two companies, according to mybiz.com. Uh, recall that the Michigan Beer Company linked a marketing, sales, and distribution agreement with Paps in December 2016. Additionally, the Paps, Paps already sells a bourbon under the Not Your Father's label. And Not Your Father's, uh, when it came out, they had the Not Your Father's uh, root beer. That exploded, and we don't know where it was coming from. The truckloads of this stuff, people went nuts. And, um, you know, you look into it more and it was PAPS. You know, you would think it, it the way the label was, it was some private entity, but it wasn't. It was PAPS. But it was it was crazy successful. But, um, you know, and now they're getting into the bourbon um, arena as well. And, um, you know, if you're distill, if you're brewing, you can distill as well, um, if you have the capacity and the knowledge. And uh, th- this is just agreements between two uh, larger entities, uh, which is cool. And getting more more product out to you, and that is our news for today, your Friday. And um, you know, if you like what we're doing, you like the podcast, you like the guests. Um, next two podcasts we have are going to be stellar. 
We got Fergal Murray. Uh, Monday, he was the uh, brewmaster for Guinness. Got him on. Uh, then we'll have uh, Jason Perkins, who is the brewmaster for Allagash. Uh, and still is a brewmaster. And um, after that, we have Mitch Steele, who was a famous brewmaster for Stone Brewing for a number of years. And now he's at New Realm. has his own thing. So we got some heavy-duty stuff coming up. Along with Beer Styles on uh, Wednesday, we go down the Great American Beer Festival uh, list of entries um, and styles and categories. And then we just explain one a week. And we then we also have on Friday, which I'm delivering to you now, uh, the Craft Brew News, where we go through news of the week. And, um, you know, if you like what we're doing, you like you like our uh, podcast, please go on to iTunes, subscribe, uh, tell a friend. Uh, give us a rating and review. Uh, you know, we're here to bring this to you uh, at no cost. Just, I need your help with this, uh, getting us out there and, and getting us up the rankings. The only way we do it is if you give us a review, they like our stuff, and tell people about it. And we're gonna, we're just expanding the uh, the reach, the global reach. We're going to be craft beer ambassadors to the planet. It's a high goal, but we're going to do it. And that's all that we have for today. So I wish you a good Friday, good weekend, and we'll see you on Monday. Take care.